Um, this is Chauncey T, and we got 0-3. Um, I'm going to say a heads up that I did I did watch the first half of football. I couldn't watch the second half of football, so I had to watch the highlights and stuff. But um, uh, Daniel Jones, um, he played an okay play of football. He had protection sometimes, and he he had a good pocket presence. Uh, he went twenty four for thirty five, two sixty six, and he had a um a um two point conversion at the end of the game. But um, he played a good amount of football. He didn't really turn over the ball, but he could have. He he threw one um. One pass that could have been a pick going the other way. And there was a fumble where he, he just didn't felt the pressure coming to his right. But he just looked towards his I think his tight end or his receiver that he thought would came out his um his route. But he just didn't feel him. So it could have been like two turnovers in that game. Uh he did get a couple of sacks on you know, key um um, key red zones and that we couldn't need those um, red zone sacks. Um, the Falcons did play good enough football, not not in the first half. The second half they did, but the first half they they played not good football at all. Um, Saquon Barkley, um, he, he has he's he's not there yet. I know it's I keep saying yet, but it's like I thought this would be the game where Saquon Barkley goes off. He did. He did get a rushing touchdown in the game. You know when we needed to. He um leap over the um the goal line and scored a touchdown. But I feel like he's he's just getting the moment. He did get a lot of, um receiving catch catches in the second half due to our unfortunate mishaps to our Blake Martinez being injured on 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 linebacker, uh Darius Slay in a hamstring injury. And Sterling Shepard getting a hamstring injury. Those are two key losses. We didn't need that. I when I saw that um, Sterling Shepard was grabbing his um his his hammy, I was like, oh no, please, it, we we can't have this right now. Um, we, we just can't. Like we're already starting bad up this season, and we're losing two key players. Just. That 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 that's ridiculous, and and I I just I just I just feel like this season just just they just shot us down or something. I don't know, bro. Uh, Kenny Galladay he had an okay game, didn't really ball out, but this is what happens when um we don't have um Darius Slay and Sterling Shepard on the field because you're you're going to get coverage like. No tomorrow, bro. Like they're gonna get coverage, but so, so what happened was we had to have um CJ Board and um Chris Johnson, I think his name is, or Johnson, that um to back him up. And you know Johnson didn't play a bad football game. He did get some couple key first downs, and he did catch the ball to keep the drive going. But um, this is gonna be tough going forward against the Saints with. Obviously, no, no, no. Darius Slay, no Sterling Shepard. Uh, get Darius Tony. I like they had got him involved in some type of play, but now since Sterling Shepard and Darius Slay is not on the on the field anymore, they're gonna have to use him as more. It's all of them that than I expected now. Because against the Saints with their defense next week, you gotta use him. You gotta use Darius Tony. There's just no other choice. Um, Evan Ingram, just that, like he, like I don't know, understand. Like every time he gets the ball, there's always a bad outcome. But he he tried to tuck it in the ball, but he he knew it when he saw that he he fumbled the ball. It didn't that it didn't go. Um, after that fumble, it didn't go into any points because. Our defense came back and sacked Matt Ryan and fumbled the, the football and got the ball right back, but that could have changed the outcome more t- dramatically than the entire game. But throughout the wide receiver crew, uh, I don't know whoever. I, it's, it was kind of like an okay game for the receiving crew. Like 
I'm honestly saying like if Sterling Shepard was still in the game and Darius Slayton is still in the game, we, we might have a better chance. Um, defense, in, in the other hand, Adore Jackson. Um, And um, McKinney, there were there were two picks that they could have got. They could have they could have changed the entire game, especially Jory Jackson. If he would have caught that pick in the end zone, when the score was four to seventeen, we honestly might might I wouldn't say we will because our offense kind of just sunk a bed at some point in the second half. Even though we scored a touchdown in the second half, it just kind of sunk a bed. If we get that pick, we might win the game. We just might win the game. Like he he had the pick, but he played it kind of like if he was diving for the ball instead of just like catching the ball. I don't I didn't understand what he was trying to do. Like he saw it, but it, it felt like he was flowing away from him for some reason. But and McKinley, he had a, almost a pick too. It just I think the defender like grabbed him at the last second, so. We had to turn that the wide receiver that saw the, the the ball thrown to his way by Matt Ryan, he kind of like pushed him out the way or something. So, um, the defense at the um first half um did get one sack, but it kind of wasn't a, it was a meaningless sack of the the card, but it was a sack that was needed because I honestly feel like we should have had at least more than three sacks. I thought we should have like five or six sacks. Um, you know Logan Ryan, you know, Logan Ryan, and um, you know Lanier L- 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 Williams, you know, not sorry, not Logan Ryan, um, Adore Jackson, and not Adore Jackson, um, Johnson. I keep saying Dwayne Jackson, Johnson and Williams. They got a sack when it was needed. It was in the third quarter though, but I, I honestly feel like we should got these a couple more sacks in the um, you know, first quarter and second quarter. Cause we did. I wouldn't say we stopped them in fourth down. I think that Falcons stopped themselves in a couple of fourth down situations, but we did stop them in the fourth, um, in the um, first and second quarter until the end of the game, I mean, until the end of the first half. Because honestly, there there was a bad rough in the rough in the passer call, pass interference call. It, the guy. It, it was, I think it was, it was the, the second quarter. I, I did, I did see it too, but it was clearly, he clearly went for his shoulder, but of course it's up to the top on his head and they're going to throw the flag every time for no reason. Like I, I don't understand what the defenders should do sometimes. Sometimes they, they clearly are showing their body movements towards his shoulder and their back and they still going to throw the flag on us. It's like, like the refs had... Like I'm not gonna blame the refs because the refs not gonna they, they're not gonna help you win a game or lose a game. Sometimes they do, and it's kind of bullshit. But there were some pe- pe- um, penalties into this entire game that were terrible. That were bad and terrible. There were some false sets that we we messed up. There were some defensive penalties that we just sh- shouldn't have extended the drive because honestly. If those penalties weren't on the on the field, we win the game because it's just it's just mishaps and you know miss opportunities, especially in the end zone. When the first in the first in the first half, we only had six points in the first half. Um, Dan Jones and the offense went down the field. We got a sack that we did not need it in the red zone, and we had self for a field goal. Um, I think that third. Um, Third drive of the game, the exact same thing. We drive down the field. Uh, we muffed up the um start of the play. Like we, Daniel Jones muffed the ball. I didn't say he muffed the ball, but like he couldn't handle the ball. It flew over his head. He had to recover it. Ten yards lost, and then a, a I think a false start of holding. I don't know. It was a false start. One of the two sends us back and getting fifteen yards by um, Johnson, and it's a field goal. So that's that's fourteen points possibly that's off the field. Like, like I, I didn't understand. Like this, like like the play calling is just it's kind of just 
not non-existent. Like there, there's passes thrown, there's there's running plays here and there, but it's like there's no creativity. I don't understand what's going on with Jason Garrett. Like I, I feel like Jason Garrett does not care, but he just wants to be like, okay, I can I can coach. Like who cares if you can coach? Coach, coach like you like you want to show like the Cowboys orientation. Oh, I was the head coach for that team. I knew what I was doing, but he doesn't care. Honestly, I don't think like he really cares about the the Giants' offense. He just wants to just be the offensive coordinator, the coordinator, and that's it. I I don't know. Um. Um. And um, you know, Gano, he's gonna be Gano. He's honestly probably our best offensive player into the entire um past three weeks. Um, you know, Matt Ryan, the exception of the first half. I mean, not first half. The first half until like the last five to four minutes, he was not good until like he had that one little magical drive that shouldn't have been a drive, honestly. He like kind of just got lucky down the field and scored a touchdown. And then the second half, we did the exact same thing to the until the entire third and fourth quarter with 11 minutes left. There were a couple third down conversions they had that we could have stopped to prevent this thing from ever happening. There was like three or four, three third downs, I think, three or two third down situations. And a second and 16. Second 16, you gave up a first down. Because uh, I think it was um, Julius Peppers. He played, he played, he played like he was going to get a pick six and not playing the receiver that he saw on his right side. He played. He he saw he saw Matt Ryan through it, but he was gonna go for the pick six and just. I, I felt like when he was a second sixteen, just play the ball, play the player. You're you're gonna have an opportunity for a third down situation to get him off the field or sell him for a field goal, so they had to score a touchdown the following play. But there was some third count, third down missed opportunities and um some situations where we could have. Ended the game on third down because this is how, this is how, this is what happens. We we have the we have the momentum, we have the positive um, attitude, and we scored a touchdown. I because I think I think um Daniel Jones, this this it was like with I think three minutes on the clock of the third quarter, and we scored until like twelve minutes or eleven minutes into the fourth quarter. That's like six minutes off the clock. That's a lot of momentum. The defense is gas. And I know the offense in both teams, the offense and our defense has enough time to relax and figure it out. How did they drive all the way from their own like 25 yard line to our one yard line and score a touchdown? No, no stops, no, 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 no adjustments, nothing. I I know Matt Ryan's good. He's a great quarterback, but there's opportunities where you you show your do your top ten defense from last year, and that at that particular time that wasn't top ten defense. From from where they started from their own drive with eleven minutes on the clock to where they scored that last that, that touchdown. That that was on. I I just I was, I was kind of confused. Now, I couldn't see it on my television. I had to see it on like my um my phone. But basically, we should have stopped them at least in that one drive because they probably got another opportunity. Maybe who knows? But um, Matt Ryan did play a good football during the the second half, near the second near the end of the second half, and then the near the end of the, of the, of the quarter um the game. Basically, that's how he he had some good throws, but. In reality, it was like the end of the first half and the second half. Uh, Katharis Patterson, I, I'm saying his name wrong. Uh, he went off. He's a big man. <laughs> He's like a Derrick Henry, but more athletic. On like, um, He's a big guy. Honestly, I thought that was the main attention. Uh, he did ball out, especially in the second half. He was getting alive. Like, like honestly, for like... For a rushing game, I thought we did great, um, keeping them going nowhere. But 
the passing game, he's a big, fast man, bro. He's number 84 for the Falcons. He's a big, fast man. It's honestly, like, it's honestly hard to tackle him down. That's why I call him, like, Derrick Henry's son, too, because that's what he basically is. He's a big, fast man. And it's like, you, you got to get him down immediately. Like, Calvin Ridley, we kept him down to, like, 61 yards. I feel like with Calvin, Calvin Ridley and um, Kyle Pitts, we kept, we contained them to the best of our ability. I thought we, we contained the, the, the Alliance offense to the best, to, like, probably the best anyone can really do. Because I know the Falcons' offense is not good, but they still have good key players. So I thought, like, um, Calvin Ridley and Kyle Pitts, we kept them – to a concealed point. We didn't let them go off, but we kept them to a concealed point. Uh, except for Patterson. Patterson um, went off in the receiving crew because he kind of was just like their main target. Um, you know, we didn't give up 100 yards. We kind of we kept their, their running offense and their... Um, you know, receiving um, offense to a close at some point, but if you're not you're not scoring points, they're going they're going to be on leech. And um, honestly, that that one test that one touchdown to their um, wide receiver at the end of the first half should have never happened. Honestly, I honestly think like the entire game, I think the first half they should never scored, and then whatever happens in the second half, they. It goes on from there, but um, yeah, their defense get that they had that one sack. Um, I think in the first um, the first quarter, when Dan Jones was driving and they sacked him back like a billion yards backwards, but in reality, um, uh, we just. We just gotta finish the game. Like we we had the game in our hands, and we just didn't close it out. Like we had an opportunity to close it out when the Falcons had the ball, with a couple third downs, third third downs, and a couple like even a second sixteen. Like we had an opportunity to close the game, but we don't do it. We shoot ourselves for some reason. Like I want to I want to cheer for this team. I really want to be high for this team. But it's like, it's like reality hits and like they want to just bring you back to like the dumpster fuck that this franchise has been the past five years. It's like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> I know the Falcons have great players and stuff, but damn, bro, this was a, this is probably going, this is probably a, a, a gun, this, this is probably going to end our season, honestly, because the next five weeks aren't going to be pretty. We play against the Saints, the Cowboys. It's not in a particular order, but the Saints, the Cowboys, the Panthers, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the Chiefs. It, like, you think you think losing to like an old two team that has no no type of positivity on the in the NFC South, like, <laughs> like. Like there's Giants fans that are like are going crazy right now, and for me, I'm just like I just I'm just kind of just dead inside every week. Like I want to cheer for this team, but to just bring it back down. And now we're seeing we losing that they say Mar- uh, Blake Martinez and um Sterling Shepard. Bruh, this is gonna probably be a long season. We might be starting like zero and six or zero and seven to to a point where we're not gonna probably win a game this season. He might be on over 17. I don't want to say that, but we we just might. And I really do not want to be the first team to go over 17 with a team that had a top 10 defense last year and an offense with a lot of players and a lot of weapons that can't do goddamn nothing. It's it's frustrating. Now we have to play against the New Orleans Saints, the Saints next week next week. Against Jameis Winston, that he's been playing good, really fo- good football. Honestly, I'm surprised because I honestly feel like Jameis Winston would kind of struggle. But I think with his offensive line and his receiving crew and his 
uh, Alvin Kamara in the backfield. I think he's okay. It's just because it's, it's just up to him making the mistakes to throw the football sometimes. But I know knowing their defense, they go get after Jalen Jones, and uh, I just I just don't know next week. Like honestly, like I, I I'll, I'll be able to watch that game next week, but I probably don't, bro. It's kind of just this this start of the season has been like. Like the start of the season of last year. Like, I know there's 14 games left, but our next five, we might be start 0 and 8. I I don't know. Like, this is not a joke. I'm being for real. That's our that our next five games are not pretty. It's I'm saying again, the Saints, Cowboys, Panthers, Chiefs, and Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I and not and not and I and it's not in order. But those are we, those are the play um teams we play next in the next five weeks. So we're zero and three. I I just don't know. I really don't know. Um, like. Like Dan Jones played okay, you know, rushing good, passing offense was okay. I'm just telling you, like losing Sterling Shepard and Thayer Slay is going to cause our offense to have to often our passing offense to change dramatically because there's no way Kenny Galladay is going to get the ball. He's going to get double coverage. I, I'm just telling you, he's going to get double coverage. Uh, Saquon Barker is going to have to be in the backfield catching some passes. If either CJ CJ Board or Johnson can step up, and I don't know what Evan Ingram, I don't really know. And if Taylor Toy can possibly be our offense next week, that would be significantly good. But I, I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. And our defense has to get out to James Winston next week, because if not, the game is over. The game is over. Honestly. Like, cause it it just it just feels like we're we're just we we every every week we shoot ourselves in the foot when we have the game and we give the opponent back the game. It's like they're acting like they they're playing like like an NFL Madden Pro team every week where they're not. Like. They have the weapons, they have the, the players, and they just they act like they can't play. But I don't know, man. I just uh, I don't know. But uh, next week we play against the Saints, and I don't know. I just really don't know. And, and, and right now we're last in the division because the the Redskins lost, uh, the and Washington football team lost, and um. Now we got to see the um, Cowboys and Eagles play this t- not tonight because um, whoever wins, honestly, uh, probably, probably going to win the division because, honestly, for the Washington football team, that defense looks kind of garbage. And I don't know. But I'll see you all next time when we play against the New Orleans Saints. Um See what happens there, honestly. Um, but yeah.